Excuse me for one second. I'm just imagining in 2021. I'm so excited for it to come. 2020 has been so bad. It's a celebration. So, as the same as the, for many of you, I am very excited for the turn into the new year. 2020 has been, well, it has been with the pandemic, with the election, and everything else that 2020 had to offer us. I'm sure like me, many of you are looking forward to what the new year will bring for all of us. The new possibilities that the new year can, could bring for all of us. And as I was thinking about that transition, as we move into 2021, I thought Joshua was a fantastic book to dive into because it is one of transition. I think from Joshua, we can all gather three, three different things from the scripture this morning or today. The first is, I think we need to be able to leave some things behind. On our journeys, we need to be able to leave some things behind. The second thing I want to, to point out from our scripture from today is we need to be open to be transformed by our experience. We need to be open to be transformed by our experience. And, the, and lastly, I think probably the most important point that we can draw from the scripture reading for today is to be aware of God's presence, past, present, and in the future. So just to give you context, um, the Joshua begins with the death of Moses. Now, if you just turn a page back, just one page back in Deuteronomy 34, what we learn is Moses is called up by God to Mount Nebo. And then while he's out there by himself, might I ask, I think it's the first time, maybe the second time he goes by himself, God shows Moses the promised land. And then Moses dies. I think in the eulogy, it actually says that never has there been a prophet, prophet such as Moses in Israel. As we enter into Joshua 1, Joshua says, God says to Joshua, Moses is dead. Now, as I looked at the commentaries for this particular passage, they all talk about the Israelites, the Israelites going into the promised land, and then the commissioning of Joshua to make it happen. So the commissioning of Joshua becoming the leader, and then the Israelites going into the promised land, what God has promised to all of them. What's fascinating to me, at least in some of the commentaries that I read, was how they kind of glossed over the fact that Moses is dead. Now, maybe because there was a lot of discussion about Moses' death, somewhat. In Deuteronomy 34, there was a mourning of his death. But I think the fact that Moses' death is mentioned by God to Joshua at the beginning in Scripture is important. And I think we need to draw upon that when we're looking at 2020 as we move into 2021. Moses is dead. God says that to Joshua. Now, I think what we can draw from that is by God just simply putting out there to Joshua, Moses is dead, and then quickly transitioning right into God's commission and his, his view for what Joshua's next steps in life are going to be. I think we can draw that some things, in this case, in this case Moses, that you thought you needed or that was important to you. 
important to Joshua, in this case, important in his lens, were no, were no longer needed. And for us to draw upon that for, as we look back on 2020, some things that you thought you may have needed, you no longer do. Or at least not in the way you thought that you did. I think by God telling Joshua, Moses is dead, I think another thing we can draw from that is, you know, you, you can't cross over into this new area, this new space that I wait for you, that I promised for you, this new year that you're going into without allowing me. Because scripture says God buries Moses. So you can't cross over into this new season, this new year, this new land that's promised without allowing me to bury some things for you. That's an important part I think we need to grab onto. 2020 has, has taught us many things. But I do think there are some things that we thought were essential that might not be. One of those things is how we come together in worship. How we church together. That will forever be changed. It will look different forever. And it should look different be different. Another is our family dynamics. We were forced to spend time, more time probably than most of the time in our lives in our family dynamic than we, we ever have, good or bad, because I've heard some stories about being forced together as a family, but it forced us to be together with our families. Another thing we thought that was essential would have been how we relate, our churches relate to the communities around us. Our relationship, our church relationship with the communities around our churches, they cannot be solely based on the building where we come to worship. Our relationship needs to be based on more than just the building in our communities. You know, we felt like it was important for us to work hard, spending time away from our families. But 2020 has taught us that by being forced together, our families are important. Our communities are important. Those relationships are important. As we move into this new year of 2021, we must be able to let go, bury some things, and leave them behind. Not only do we need to bury them, not only do we need to leave them behind, but we also need to be, not be centered in the darkness of 2020. Many of you listening have been directly affected by the pandemic, job loss, a list of things. And while we do need to mourn and, and and those losses we have, we, we can't be centered in those places as we move into 2021. See, as I mentioned before, the Israelites had just spent 40 years in the wilderness. Now they're about to enter into the promised land. A land of rest is what is said. But as we learn in Joshua, rest is not the absence of hardship. No, my brothers and sisters, the, the rest comes from the knowledge that God is with you, past, present, and future. And we know that because of the promised land that God gave way back in Genesis 13 or 15 to Abraham. A promise that we know to be God's presence in our future. And it's an absolute. It is where we should start in our new year. We should start with the absolute knowledge that God's presence is in our future, no matter what. God's presence is ahead of us. And just like the Israelites, 
remembering God's presence in the past, in the wilderness. And that would be 2020 for us. And then praising God's grace and love going into 2021, into the future, is essential. The only sure way, and I know that 2020 has been a tough year, but the only sure way to survive and get through and get past this hard year, hard times presently and in the future, as is that we must make sure without a shadow of a doubt we are looking and facing and hold and holding on to the knowledge of the presence of God in our lives. We need to be looking in the right direction, in God's direction. Scripture says, no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Siblings, when we start to look at our troubles, and we look at them just over and over again, actually for too long, because we 2020 has that effect, I think, on us, where we center in on the troubles and the trials and the tribulations that we're experiencing. We start to wallow in the quicksand of our circumstances. Those troubles, those, those hardships, that darkness, it becomes a point of overwhelm, of making us feeling overwhelmed. It clouds our lens. Trouble becomes this capital T that we just can't even see past. I think with Joshua, what we can pull from Joshua is we need to remind ourselves who God is and what God has done and what God has promised God will do in our future. God has been preparing for you and I for the future, our future, and preparing us for what God has in store for us. And what I think we need to remember is we need to be the example. As we move into 2021, we need to be the example of love in the midst of circumstance. We need to be the example of love in the midst of of circumstances, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of division, in the midst of chaos. We need to be the voice of love, compassion, empathy. Before we can scream, Happy New Year, before we can dance and bring in the new year, or before we can even start to think about how we're going to experience the new year. I think there's some things that God needs us to know before we step into this new season. For the Israelites, it was a promised land. Anything that stands in our way, anything that might inhibit our walk, our acknowledgement of God in our lives, needs to be removed. We need to let it go. We need to let it die. And I think, you know, I, I know that's, that's hard for us. It's hard for us to sometimes to think of the future with hope. That hope because solely based on the presence of God. Because it's scary. 2020 has made our hopefulness scary because we dare to hope, but then we get, we, it seems to, that we get pushed back, back down by our experiences in 2020, unfortunately. I think we've been so used to the convenience of our Christianity at times, the convenience of our, our discipleship. When we get pushed to our limits, it's, it, it's hard. I, I know it is. I, I, I fully acknowledge that. But what God reminds us, especially in Joshua, 
reminds us in Joshua, through Joshua, and all the Israelites, is if we are going to move into something new, we need to understand that it, what it takes to be in the walk, understanding the presence of God, and being open to God all around us, now and in the future, with hopefulness. See, many of you are, are just praying for the arrival of 2021. I can't wait, because that means we are one step closer to getting back to normal. We're excited because we may, we're just this much closer to getting back to normal. But let me remind you how soon we forgot about our scripture for today. That the season that God has brought us out of, the season, the wilderness that God has brought the Israelites out of, they're about to enter into something totally new. Something they have not experienced, a land, a promised land that they have not experienced ever before. He wants us to, God wants us to draw on our experiences in the wilderness. We need to draw on our experiences of 2020. As I said earlier, we need to leave some stuff there. But we need to also hold on to our experiences of God during our time in 2020 and be transformed by those experiences. Become aware of God's presence and then be transformed by those experiences. Friends, God is not ushering us into this fulfilled promise of God's presence in the future that he shows with his love for us in his son, Jesus Christ, for you to be continued to be the same Christian you were before. Through our time in 2020, the one thing I'm sure of is we cannot enter into 2021 with being the same Christian we were entering into 2020. We need to be transformed and changed. We need to be better. We need to be one of love, one of compassion, people of love, people of compassion, and empathy. We cannot enter 2021 the same Christians. We cannot. Scripture says, only be strong and be very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. If you are going to celebrate the coming of the new year, and I, I highly encourage you to do that, if you're going to celebrate it, what I think what God wants every one of us to know and to listen to as we move into 2021 is that understanding the heartache and the pain that has been a part of our year, remembering how God has brought us through those heartaches and pains through the course of the year, and then holding on to those experiences to be the example of love, of loving discipleship and praise and worship God anyway. Yes, it's been a difficult year. Yes, it's been a challenging year. And yes, 2021 is going to be different, different than any other year we've entered into thus far, I think, for many of us. But the simple fact that God has promised, as he did to Joshua and the Israelites, he does for all of us. His presence should be enough for us to enter into that new season with joy and hopefulness and wonder. What does it mean to know of God's presence? What does it mean to know of God's presence always, past, present, and future? I have a quick example of a quick story for you. My grandmother, God rest her soul, her name is Aurelia Demas. If you were, she, she loved Christ. I mean, if you were to ask her if she was a Christian, she would tell you, not yet, but I'm working on it every day. It was wonderful. I, I, I miss her so much. She didn't go anywhere without two things. 
a Bible and a gospel song on her heart. And she would tell you that. She'd be, she'd be uh, humming a hymn, a gospel song, and she would always have her Bible somewhere on her. A little Bible in her purse. She had a Bible at church, a Bible at home. It's, it's, She's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Christian. See, my grandmother was so sure of the presence of God in her life. It was like, it was like a shield around her. It, it, you, could, it was, you could just tell. It was like a shield around her. I, it, it reminds me of, of, of Psalms 3 when David is fleeing from um, his son Absalom. And if you remember that Psalms, it starts out with, with David just, just proclaiming that all these forces are against him. It's horrible. It's, it's so bad. God, it's so bad. But then he starts to reminisce about other times it's been bad. David does. King David does. And, and he starts to reminisce about how God has brought him through those, those times. So then... It, it, it changes. The, the psalm changes at that time. And part of that psalm says, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts, my, lifts up my head. My grandmother embodied that. She truly did. I remember one time I was driving her home from her house and we were stopped at a red light. And for whatever reason, traffic had been backed up and we were at the light. So because we were backed up so far, we were actually blocking someone's driveway. Now, my grandma was in a front seat. My grandma was only 4'10", so I'm sure you, if someone was looking in, they probably couldn't really see her in the front seat. So here we are sitting in the back of a, in, in, blocking someone's drive because of the stoplight. And this person in this white van is, is backing out of their driveway, and they're not stopping. And it looks like they're going to actually hit us on where my grandmother is sitting on the um, passenger side. And so I beat my horn twice just to get their attention, just, you know, just in case they didn't see me, you know? So as I beat my horn, the woman who was driving, she leans out the window and she goes, I see you. There's no reason for you to beat your horn. Now, I, I'm being nice on how the language she used, but let's just say she was not happy that I beat my horn. So again, I don't think the woman could, had seen my grandmother but my grandmother kind of leaned forward and the woman's kind of hanging out her window. So now they're, they're kind of out of either, you know, maybe a car and a half length away from each other, right? If you can imagine, right? And my grandmother leans forward and she says, well, it's short, in, in a, in a, if you can imagine the sweet grandmotherly voice that you can imagine at this time. Well, it sure didn't seem like you saw us, young lady. And the woman says, now, she has calmed down a notch, but she still says, well, I didn't. So watch your horn, she says. And my grandmother, who embodied the understanding of the presence of God in her life at all times, says without skipping a beat, well, God bless you, and I'm going to pray for you that your day gets better. How do you come back to that? What would you say to that if, if someone said that to you in, the, in a heated moment of exchange of, of, of just, ah, my grandmother presents God to this woman in a way that's disarming and also in a way that assures this woman that my grandmother knows exactly of whom she is speaking and how she is speaking to that woman. Now, I will tell you what the woman said to her to this day makes me and my family laugh because I tell them the story all the time is that the woman, the only thing she could muster to say is, thank you. After all that, she said, thank you. Siblings, we can go into 2021 with the hopes of something better, and, and we should. We absolutely should. But that hope must be centered in the knowledge of the presence of a loving God, no matter what the circumstances. Because if we don't have that, how can we embody God, embody Christ in our life in a way that while the circumstances are bad, 
We are the examples of love and compassion in this world. Christ came to us, right? Uh, the, the embodiment of the word. And as, a, as, as, the, as the sign of the, just the immense love that God has for all of us. We need to take that love, that love that was shown to us, the love of Christ into 2021. As we do that though, as we try to bury some things, learn from some of the experiences we had in 2020, and then remember that God's presence is in our future in 2021 and look forward to that time, we, we have to draw on the fact that just God's presence is, is a life-giving orientation for all of us, and not just us. It's also, an or, it can be an orientation for those who are around us. Let me say that again. It is a life-giving orientation. The orientation of knowing the presence of God is life-giving, not only for us, but for those who are around us. As the example I gave for the woman in the van, the promised land was something new for the Israelites. We've already established that. And the only certainty they had at the time for all the faithful who were the Israelites is that God would be with them and for them to be strong and courageous in that knowledge. God's presence was with them at that moment and already promised for their future. So be strong and be courageous, as it says in the scriptures. And God tells Joshua to be strong and to be courageous. And that's an encouragement for Joshua, for the Israelites, and for all of us to live in the light of God and God's word and, God's, and, and live in the light of what God has for all of us in our future. I wanted to close by simply asking a request. I know how hard 2020 has been for many of us listening right now. And I also know there are some things that some of you need to really leave in 2020. So I want you to remember those times that were hard Remember those glimpses of light and experiences with God in 2020? Hold on to those things. Really live into the knowledge of God's presence in our future in 2021. But for those of you who are listening, who know there is something in 2020 that you need to leave behind, that you need to bury. It may be a toxic relationship, it could be maybe an addiction, it could be something as simple or as grand as a failure and you just can't get over the failure, whatever that may be. I'm gonna ask you to, to, to claim that, to find that one thing that you cannot, that you know you need to leave in 2020 as you move into 2021. And within the next 24 hours, I want you to find someone, someone you trust deeply, someone you can, that can hold on to the knowledge that you want to give them, which is this. I need for this person to hold on to the fact that you know you want to leave that in, 20, in 2020. Like I said, whether it's a toxic, toxic relationship, whether it's whether addiction, whether it's a failure, whatever it may be. Tell that person what you would like to leave in 2020 and have them help you do just that. Whether it's through prayer, whether it's reminded you that that's something that you wanted to leave in 2020 and you're not, so please try to do that. However they find a way, in the next 24 hours, find someone, let them know what you'd like to leave in 2020. Acknowledge it and then move forward. Friends, 
as you move into 2021, as we celebrate this new year, this new season, this new land that we've never been on because 2020 has been a new experience, so why not 2021? Remember your experiences. Understand that God is present and allow yourself to take in the knowledge through God's presence that he, that God will be present in your future and that it should allow you to have a lens and a focus of better things to come. God bless all of you and Happy New Year.